How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're going to be rebuilding the Oakland Athletics. So if you guys are looking forward to more rebuilds, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And as always, in the comment section, let me know which team to do next. So let's hop into this without any further ado. When I look at the Oakland Athletics, I definitely see them being, you know, maybe a wild card team to start season one, maybe season two. But by season three, they really should be pushing to be a playoff team like winning the west in the american league so let's take a look at their squad they definitely have a very solid core to build around um sean Manea, manaya whatever it is he's kind of started to fall off you know i mean he had a 3-5 era last year which wasn't bad don't get me wrong that's not bad at all um but i feel like injuries are really holding him back um and he does well sometimes in sim, sim style franchise but at the same time he can also flop so i'm not too sure what to do with him um when we look at the rest of the pitching staff there are a lot of good younger arms that develop um mangdon's one lozardo's another one we got aaron brooks who could potentially hit mid 70s you got blackburn montas um cotton aj puck so there's some good names down there that we can look forward to in starting pitching relief core it's an aging core there are some decent players here hendrix is one of them um another player i want to keep is lou trevino maybe uh there was another one possibly wang but i'm not sure if he'll get good enough quick enough um so we definitely need to get the uh, relief core, the bullpen a little bit younger. Blake Trinan, he's going to be our closer for the future. He usually does well. Um, catching wise, we got Sean Murphy to look forward to. But um, these two are just going to be kind of placeholders until that. First base, we have Matt Olson. Don't have to worry about that at all. He turns into an absolute beast in franchise. Um, Jerkson Profar is a player I'm going to keep my eye on. Um, he usually just doesn't hit the ball well, which I don't understand, you know, 60s and 56 or like 56 and 66 for contact aren't too bad. You know, he's in his mid twenties, he's 78 overall, you know, 76 vision. You would think he would hit the ball pretty well. He'd have a good average, good amount of hits, but he normally just doesn't. So he's a player I'm going to keep my eye on, um, to see if we need a new second baseman, third baseman, Matt Chapman, we're set. He's a, he's a good piece to build around him, Matt Olson. We're good there. Um, Marcus Semien, normally a good shortstop, so we're we're usually we're set there. We also have Jorge Mateo to look forward in the future. Left field, Chris Davis. I'm gonna see if we can keep him around as like a um, DH, especially if we can get him for a lot cheaper than 16 million. If we can get him cheaper than 16 million, he's probably gonna be our DH. Um, moving into center field, Ramon Laureano is gonna be our starting center fielder. If he just doesn't hit the ball well. Then we may try to find a new left fielder, but for now, or I mean a new center fielder, but for now, Loriano is going to be the center fielder. He's got a cannon. He's a good player to have there. Steven, Sp Steven Piscotti is a decent right fielder. Um, contract's not too bad, but um, he's a player that if he does well, we'll keep him. But I definitely think we could find a little bit better of a right fielder. When it comes to the budget, there really is only... Um, one player i'm looking to get rid of and that's joaquin soria mike fires i'm perfectly fine keeping around for two seasons he he won't be too terrible of a four or five starter but joaquin soria at the age of 34 and he's only 82 i think it's time to find a new uh relief pitcher so there's kind of the ideas of what i'm thinking about with the team who to replace who to keep around who i'm kind of keeping my eyes on so let's get into these trades catch you guys in a sec I know in real life, Jerry Blevins was traded to the Braves for cash, but since we can't trade for cash in franchise, we're just going to trade him for another aging um, bullpen arm in Johnny Venters. It's a one-year deal. It's basically just swapping two old relievers. We're going to the Dodgers for Dylan Floro. A player I was looking to get rid of, Joaquin Soria, is going to be traded to the Dodgers. Like I said, I wanted to find a new reliever um, to replace Soria just because Soria's got that big contract. And he's already in his mid-30s. Dylan Floro should be good for the next three, four seasons. He usually develops well. And with these stats, he's just a really solid relief pitcher. Since I'm looking to move Chris Davis to more of a DH role, we're going to go to the Rays for Austin Meadows. Normally a right fielder. He can play left field. And because his fielding's not that great, I think he's kind of suited more towards that left field spot. A potential, 65 overall. He's more of a little bit of a project left fielder. But I definitely think he's going to help us out come season three four and five most definitely santis sanchez joel Seddon. 
and then um fernando rodney a player who's going to decrease in rating very quickly for a long reliever in daniel norris right now he may not be the best but i know he develops come the age of like 26 27 so he'll be kind of that long reliever that you know every bullpen needs season one's gonna look like this we're gonna have um shamanea triggs estrada fires and mangden in the bullpen we're gonna have daniel norris uh pettit trevino floro buckter um dole hendrix and trinan i feel like we're set for now i have a couple eyes on like uh some some pitchers because i think hendrix will be fine in the setup role trinan should be good in the closer role here is kind of like a good competition for starting rotation because we do have estrada we do have triggs we have fires mangden we also have lazardo we have blackburn montas puck there's some good starting pitching to look forward to in the future Looking at the lineup, this is how we're going to be looking for most games. Semyon Piscotty, Chapman, Olsen, Chris Davies, um, Austin Meadows moved to a left fielder, already moves up to a 70 overall, so that's good. Loriano, Profar, and Fagley. Um, on the bench, we have Morales, Hunley, and Pinder. I think this looks good. I think it's going to it's it's gonna be, it's going to go really, really well. We're going to get a wild card spot, or we're just going to miss it. I think it's going to be one of those two things. Let's see how season one finishes. But first, we got to go to the draft. Alrighty, so the draft went accordingly. Our first pick was Napoleon Phipps, uh, 58 overall, B potential. Um, decent hitting stats, uh, 58 overall. Um, he's got 87 potential. The next key one is going to be Morris Petrovitz. He's 68 overall, 89 potential. Already got some good per nines, um, so he looks to be a good starting pitcher for us. And then the next key one is going to be another starting pitcher in Reggie Perry. I know we didn't need starting pitching. But um, I just went with the best available player in the draft. And um, again, per nine's already in the 50s. Not too bad. He's a 67 overall with 85 potential. And I guess one more to kind of highlight is another starting pitcher who's a 79 potential and 60 overall currently. So that's kind of the highlights of the draft. Um, I just I just went with what was the best available. And it just happened to be a lot of pitchers. So there's season one's draft. I'll see you guys at the end of season one. All right, so season one didn't go according to plan at all. We finished 22 games under 500. And let's go see what went wrong. Um, we finished 25 games back in the West and then the wild card, 17. So things things were pretty bad. Looking at Marcus Semien, you can see he's up to an 81. He hit 264 on the year. Not terrible. I think it's pretty comparable. Yeah, I mean, it's actually his best season um, in terms of average. So that's not bad. What about hits? Hits, yeah, pretty up there as well. Steven Piscotty, pretty lackluster. I mean, 152 hits is not bad. Uh, Matt Chapman's potential went down. Um, contract, coaching. So we might need to invest in some new coaches for next season. He also didn't hit the ball too well. Two, 231 is not bad. Uh, or not good. It's not good. Uh, 128 hits, definitely down from the previous season. Matt Olson, he's going to turn into a very good player. So I'm not worried about that. Chris Davis. Is starting to fall off so who knows if we bring them back austin meadows is up to a 73 um 274 132 hits okay not a bad season um ramon loriano 229 is kind of low 122 hits definitely need to see that go up jerks and profar um 288 average 165 hits 22 home runs 71 rbis perfect and then um like i said the catching position is we're, we're, we're holding on until sean murphy's ready to come up and then looking at the rest of the team pretty lackluster in terms of average i'm assuming this is where things went poorly yeah sean sean didn't really do too well here 434 era you know his whips at 1.5 yikes andrew triggs kind of the same deal all right uh marco estrada same thing height um so it looks like mike mike fires is one of our best pitchers daniel mangden got roughed up a little bit as well so starting pitching was definitely an issue uh, Daniel Norris, yikes, didn't didn't go too well from him. Pettit in this relief role, solid. Trevino, not so much. It, yeah, so it's looking like our pitching, an area that I actually felt pretty comfortable with, let us down a lot, um, quite a bit actually. Looking at our team, you can see Lazardo's up to a 74. He's definitely a player I'm looking to bring up soon. Probably not next season, but definitely soon. Um, anybody else who's kind of made a step up Sean Murphy definitely looks like he's going to be in the major leagues next season He's one of our better catchers already hitting stats wise a little a little disappointing though um, 
Kenji Morales, yikes, he's down to a 57. Um, looking at the rest of the team, Mateo's probably a couple seasons away. And then outside of that, no one really too exciting to look forward to. So that's season one. Very disappointing. We definitely need to find some, some improvements. And this offseason can uh, play a big part in that. So there's the playoff bracket. Let's see who wins the World Series really quick. The Nationals. So to keep the video a little bit shorter than normal, I'm not really going to show you too in depth about free agency. We're just going to, uh, I'm going to show you who I'm going to sign and who I'm not going to sign in terms of re-signing players. And then I'll see you guys at the start of season two um, to let you know who we signed in uh, free agency. Exclusive negotiations. I'm not really interested in anything right now. I don't really want to pay Chris Davis too much more. Um, he went down in average, and I feel like we could get a little bit better of a DH slash outfielder for uh, cheaper. Arbitration, you guys can see these were, these top six up here were offered. Um, and then the rest, you guys can read if they were offered or not offered. And then um, going to contracts. Um, I did offer Chris Davis a one-year deal for $4 million. He accepted that. Um, looking at the rest of these contracts here. Yeah, everybody should get one. So I'll see you guys at the start of season two. Season two is going to start with the trade Austin Beck and Aaron Brooks for Omar Nevarez. Um, He's not much better than the catchers we already have, but he normally just hits the ball very well. And uh, again, we need a stopgap catcher, and I think it'll help out a little bit with what we have. Plus, we kind of have a surplus of starting pitchers, so I'm okay with letting uh, one of them go. Alrighty, so season two is going to look like this. The big addition here is Garrett Cole. Um... Why does he already have a game played? What? What? Ha Wait, what? How did we? How do we already have two games played? I haven't even simmed anything. Anyways, whatever. Um, so let's take a look at the pitching rotation. So Gary Cole's the new addition here. Um, this is his contract: three years, seventeen point seven million. I'm gonna give uh Sean Manea one more season. See how he does. If he doesn't do well. He's going to have potential. He's going to have trade value. We're going to find somebody else um, to kind of fill that spot. We have Mangden, who's up to an 81. Blackburn, who's up to an 81. And Michael Fires, who's kind of our lower rated player. I'm just kind of giving time until we get Lazardo or Puck up into the bigs. When you look at the bullpen, Norris, Dahl, Trevino, Hendricks, Buckner. Uh, Buckner, Bowman was available in the Rule 5 draft. And he gets really good. Usually hits about the mid 80s. So he was a definite pickup for us, especially since we lost quite a few arms in the offseason. Um, I think it was like three, so we might as well. And then Floro and Trinan. When you look at the lineup, this is how it is. No changes. Um, I did bring back Chris Davis for a season um, for about four million. Ormar Narvaez, the new trade. And then I signed um, Lurie Garcia to a one-year deal just kind of as a utility player um, since we did kind of need um, an extra bench player. When we look at the, the team, you know, we do have some prospects down there. Um, we have, we can just do this way, um, roster history. We can do um, first year player draft. We have, I went the wrong way. Boom. Alrighty. So first year player draft, we have Mariano, Mariano Gomez, 60 overall. Napoleon Phipps, 58 overall. Sam Huggins, 61 overall. Reggie Perry, 67 overall. He's going to be in double A this year. And then same with Morris Petrovitz. He's 68 overall. Uh, he's going to be in double A too. So those are kind of the main players to look out for for our prospects. You guys can see them there. I'm kind of interested to see how they do. But that's the team for season two now. Let's get into it. Let's see how things go. Um, I may have to make some moves at the deadline. Because I, have, um, I already have some some fears about who may do well and who may do bad so i'll catch you guys um at draft day first we got to do the draft obviously seasons two draft and we went with a center fielder for our first pick 62 overall 80 potential 19 year old he's got some good contact stats already um so he looks like a good first decent first round pick the next one is going to be a closing pitcher um he's 68 overall mixed mitch grove his per nines already look pretty good at the age of 19 86 potential um, the next guy we're going to highlight is towards the end, Lincoln Sheehan, 63 overall, 81 potential. Um, there was one player that I did miss out on, and that was, I passed up on this guy, David Blanco, 
94 potential, 64 overall, very good fielder already. Third baseman, um, kind of looks like a, a Matt Chapman. Uh, very good fielder, could definitely use a little bit of improvement on the bat. So that was the one guy I passed up on. I'll see you guys um, as season two progresses. Okay, so season two finishes 99 and 63. We made the postseason as a wild card team. And we're taking on the Red Sox. So let's see how the team finished. And let's see. League leaders Matt Olson had the most home runs. And Garrett Cole and Sean Manea. Um, Manaya, just, you know, they pitched very well. So let's take a look at the pitching rotation. Who seemed to really turn things around. Especially after last year. who uh, They were definitely the biggest question mark. Um, Garrett Cole pitched very well. 2.88 ERA. 17-10 and 10 on the season. Solid. Awesome. He shut me up. I, he was a player I thought I was going to trade. And we, you know, what does he do? He goes, gets to a 90 overall, finishes the year 20 and 4 with a 2 5 ERA. How did he not win the Cy Young? Show me who won the Cy Young. James Paxton? He had a high. What? The record is worse. He got robbed. We got robbed. We got robbed. Paul Blackburn. 3 ARA, okay, 106 strikeouts in almost 200 innings, I know his K per 9s are pretty good, or pretty bad, very bad, but hey, he's pitching very well, um, Daniel Mengden, definitely needs to see some improvement from her, him, and uh, Fires, you know, oh well, Daniel Norris, solid, sub 3 ERA, that's what I want to see from my long reliever, Dahl, under 4, okay, I mean, it's something we can work with. Trevino's up to an 88. He had a sub-3 ERA. Solid. That's what I want to see. Hendricks, I want to see a little bit better. It's obviously a lot better than the 7 that he had the previous year, but, um, you know, definitely want to see a little bit better. Maybe like a sub-3-5. Um, Buckner, probably leaving. Um, <laughs> he's aging. Not getting much better. Bowman, 78 overall. <sighs> that ERA is bad. Floro did very well. Um, so that's good to see a two ERA. Perfect. And then Trinan looks to be lights out. Um, we signed him to a long-term deal, at least for the rest of the rebuild, um, because we need a closer and he's one of the better ones in the game. Um, let's take a look at the lineup. See how things went. Semyon 273 on the year. Okay. All right. A little bit better than previous year. A lot better. Seven more home runs, um, 24 more RBIs, um, similar hits. So that's good to see Piscotti. I mean, 300 average, okay. 30 more hits on the year, solid. Chapman, okay, a little bit better. He's improving. Matt Olson's a beast. 52 home runs, 129 RBIs, 30 more hits from the last year. He's just gross. Uh, Chris Davis, 40 home runs, 111 RBIs, okay. All right. Austin Meadows is up to a 76. He hit 255 on the year, so that's a little bit better. You know, I mean, the average didn't go up. But, you know, he's improving. That's what I want to see. Loriano, 239. Um, less hits, though. You know, we got to get those hits. Jerks and Profar is up to an 86 overall. The thing is, um, I tried to give him a contract extension. He wanted around $10 million a year. We can get Chad Pender, um, you know, who hit 271 in his limited plate appearance. You know, same age. You know, if I started him, he probably would be a similar overall as well. And he's about half of what profile wants Narvaez hit 259 wish it was a little bit better but um he's still he's he's just one of those players we're looking to use until um Murphy gets uh ready for the bigs Lazardo's probably still another season away before we bring him up to the majors he is one of our better pitchers but I just feel like for now just with this per nines um they do compare similar to Mangden but I want to I want to give him one more year so he's like fully ready um, Pucks 72. Okay, Montas 73. Petrovic 71. Um, so that's good to see. Um, let's see who else, who else, who else? Anybody down here? I think Huggins was the player we drafted. Bullpen. Eh. Uh, let's see here. Murphy's a 76. Awesome to see. Napoleon Phipps 62. Um, Pinder 80. Mikey White 70. Okay, Mateo 73. All right. Um, Fowler 64, um, but not too much has changed. So let's get into these playoff games or this playoff game. Red Sox. Uh, let's just we'll, we'll sim it. What happens? Whatever happens, happens. We win four to two. Awesome. We're taking on the Yankees. Um, we lose. 
we win i want cole pitching i want cole pitching so let's do i messed it up i messed it up uh yeah cole's cole's on the mound so then i want like that just kidding i want it like that all right let's get into it now um boom we lost so facing elimination that is us for the season take a quick look and see how people did Semyon, not good chapman olsen really so the players i would have expected a little bit better production out of really let us down um let's take a look at the pitching blackburn got a little roughed up um yeah kind of our starter two of our starters kind of shaky um, a couple players in the bullpen got roughed up as well so unfortunately that is the season let's take a look see who finishes as the world series winner it is the dodgers defeating the yankees um and that's how season two finishes better we made the playoffs we won a lot more games you know we're only moving up so let's see how season two's off season goes going into season three and i'll catch you guys um once i figure out all the arbitration and stuff exclusive negotiations um I feel like we could get something a little bit better for 5.8 million than Semyon. Semyon's just, we'll see. If we if we don't find anybody, we'll bring them back. Uh, Profar wants 11 million now. Um, so we're going with Hendricks and Garcia as our two offers here. Um, the rest of the guys don't really interest me. Arbitration, really the only one that I don't want to bring back is Buckner. Um, everybody else is getting it. Even Bowman, who had a pretty rough year. Contracts wise, everybody's getting one besides this guy um, just because he's 35 and he's probably not going to stay at that overall. Um, so, yeah, that's the season two off season in terms of contracts. I'll see you guys when season three starts to show you who we brought in um, and any trades that we make. So looking at this year, the only change that I made was adding a bench bat. Keith McClure, he's 19 years old. He's 74 overall. Um, he's like a middle infielder, third baseman kind of you know like just the stats look decent you know uh we needed kind of that bench bat we also did make a couple signings during free agency one of those signings was um cesar hernandez um another bench bat you know 30 years old we signed him to a one-year deal um i didn't think it was that bad alex jackson was another player we uh brought in he's a catcher um just because the prospect that we have in triple a Sean Murphy, he's a 76, but I just don't think his hitting stats are there just yet. I think one more year will definitely will definitely be uh, what he needs. So speaking of players who need one more year, Jesus Lazardo, the pitcher, I still think he needs one more. So I decided to bring in Hyun Jin Ryu, 80 overall at the age of 35 or 34. Um, he will decrease, but I think as just a one year pitcher, he should be just fine. Um, Sean Manea, for some reason, is a little bit lower. Let's just push him up a little bit into the rotation. But you guys can see the rotation hasn't changed much. Um, and then the bullpen hasn't changed much either. Besides one big addition in Keone Kella. 90 overall. A four-year, $7.8 million per year deal. Besides his walks per nine, his, his per nines are amazing. He had a decent year last year. So I'm hoping he can kind of solidify that setup role. Which kind of flipped between floro and bowman and both of them were here and there uh so we'll we'll see how that goes i feel pretty conf confident in the pitching i feel like the lineup looks good as well um a player i'm gonna definitely gonna keep my eye on again is piscotti um he did well last year but who knows i i think he might at one point start to decrease in rating um loriano is another player that we may have to move on from just his hitting stats aren't good enough so we'll see how season three goes. I'll see you guys at the draft. All right. So the last draft that we're going to control in, uh, is season three's draft. And the main highlight is this 70 overall pitcher with 90 potential Rob Chen. He could actually feature by season uh, five. Um, another highlight is uh, Jerome Lewis, a 68 overall closing pitcher. Um, decent per nines. He's got 85 potential. Um, looking at the rest. Nothing too special. Uh, Kareem Dooley is not another uh, is like another pick that isn't bad. Seventy eight potential, but the other ones um, aren't too exciting. So there's that. Let's see how the rest of season three plays out.
midway through season three so at the deadline basically we're gonna be making a trade for brian anderson of the marlins uh we don't need a third baseman we obviously have matt chapman but uh it says he can play second i think he's a little bit too good to be playing second base i want to stick him in right field um both steven piscotti and chad pinder are kind of underperforming this year piscotti's at 250 average and pinder's at a 235 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna trade chad pinder Jen Ho Sang, who is a pitcher that we signed last season in free agency. Um, he usually has a quite a bit of trade value. That's why I sign him. And then Kevin Merrill. We have a, uh, a good amount of shortstops in the farm system. We also have Nick Allen there. So getting rid of Kevin Merrill is fine with me. We're getting a really solid um, new player in Brian Anderson. Who, like I said, I'm thinking about moving him to right field. So now I'm going to move uh, Piscotti to see if we can get a new second baseman. Alrighty, so the trade we're going to be doing to get that new second baseman is going to the Rays for Brian Goodwin as a outfielder for at least a season. And then Daniel Robertson of the Rays. He's got arbitration coming up. He's got $3.3 million contract. Um, his stats, they don't look amazing. Uh, but, you know, he's been a 270 hitter or at least a 265 hitter and above. So it's definitely not bad at all um maybe we could get wendell because i know wendell is we're not getting him um yeah let's just go with daniel robertson uh we're getting rid of steven piscotti like i said um which opens up a little bit of salary space another player that we're going to be trading is mikey white and sheldon noose nouse nouse noose whatever it is let me show you the lineup real quick after we make those trades all right, so after the trades, this is what the team is looking like. Robertson moves to second. Brian Anderson moves out to right field. Um, I like it. You know, Brian Goodwin's our new uh, bench bat for us. We sent down the shortstop to AAA. He was only 19 anyways, so it's not like it's a big deal. We also have Lurie Garcia, who's a very good utility player. Um, so, yeah, I, I like those trades. As long as they both perform, I think that makes us a stronger team. Uh, so, yeah, let's see how the rest of the season finishes. Season three finishes with us uh, being a wild card team with 101 wins. Really? Okay, well, let's look at the standings. We missed it by two games. Okay, all right, so we had a league leading stat. Garrett Cole had the most strikeouts. So let's take a look at everybody's stats. Garrett Cole, again, is putting up amazing numbers. A sub three ERA, a 1.11 whip. Those are great. 16 and 7 on the year. Sean Manea is up to a 93, 286 ERA, 1.12 whip. So after basically after the season where I was like, hey, this is this is your make or break season. He's pitched unreal and he's really shown his worth. Uh Paul Blackburn, uh, you know, a 3.4 ERA. Not as good as last year, but he's still still putting up good numbers. Um, and his strikeout numbers went up as well, which is good to see. Daniel Mangden, that's a little that's better, you know brought his era down a, a whole like point that's awesome to see he went 19 and 8 1.08 whip solid hyun jin rio even in his like season awesome stats a 3.4 era definitely not bad at all he finished 17 and 8 daniel norris still kind of struggling um i'm hoping he starts to develop soon lou trevino's doing solid liam Hendricks even better um uh, matt bowman's kind of struggling so we may have to find a new destination for him. Keone Kell is not doing as well as I would have hoped. Uh, Dylan Floro. Okay, as a setup man, definitely, definitely good. And then Blake Trinan has been lights out for us. And uh, I'm really liking what I'm seeing from him. Lineup wise, Marcus Semien. Okay, 84 overall. 280, I think that's his best of his career. Yeah, 280 is best of his career. Daniel Robertson, 308 average. So solid pickup. Definitely a solid pickup. Matt Chapman's up to a 95 or down to a 95. No, it says he's up, but he's, I don't, I don't know what's going on. It's his best year. So I don't understand why that's an issue. Uh, Matt Olson, which is putting up Matt Olson numbers. Um, Brian Anderson hit 300 on the year. He's up to an 88, a potential, his best season um, to date. Austin Meadows is still going up. Obviously, like I said, he was going to be a project. And I mean, he's he's been very consistent, you know, around 250 average, 120 hits. I just need him to get past that. You know, we just traded Steven Piscotti, who was hitting 250. So we definitely need to find something a little bit better. 
or not even find something. We just need him to produce a little bit more. Roman Laureano, I'm going to give him one more year. One more year to see how he does. You know, his hitting stats are slowly starting to get a little bit better. So we'll see how he does. Cesar Hernandez, we signed him to a year deal. He's starting to go down a little bit, but 286 average, 174 hits, 16 home runs, 72 RBIs, not bad at all. And Omar Narvaez, 277. That's good for a catcher. Normally, they don't do too well. Um, the bench bats, pretty solid, pretty solid. So let's take a quick look at some of our prospects. Lozardo is up to an 80, so he'll probably hop in that fifth spot. Um, Petrovitz is up to a 75, so he's not too, he's probably season five. Um, it'll be his debut. Puck just really isn't getting past that 75 rating. Um, so since he has a bit of trade value, we may look to trade him um and get someone really good you know that a trade value is definitely going to be helpful reggie perry's up to a 73 and then there was one more down here what's his name it is sheehan six uh 67 so that's not bad definitely not bad at all uh, mitch grows a 71 so he didn't go up too much this year sean murphy murphy is an 80 so he'll be our starting catcher next year uh let's see who else who else who else who else Oh, that first baseman, Napoleon Phipps is 64. Uh, shortstops, Mateo, Ehrman, and Allen. And then center field, we had Elvis Herrera, who's a 65. Okay. So, and uh, so just a, a little bit of growth here and there, but let's see how the playoffs go. We somehow are a, a wild card team with 101 wins, and we get eliminated. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, Let's let's get into season four. Let's see how things go. Cardinals won the World Series. I guess that's kind of important, huh? But now now we get into the offseason stuff. Alrighty, arbitration wise, um, everybody was offered it. I, I'm giving Bowman a, a, at least one more shot. Dole wasn't given it. Um, he was really the only one. And then contracts wise, everybody was offered a contract um, here. Um, the only ones that didn't offer a contract was Ryu, Luri Garcia, and Cesar Hernandez. I had exclusive negotiations with them, and I didn't give them a contract. Um, there is a bit of an issue. Garrett Cole didn't accept the, the player option that he had in his contract. So we do have this offer on the table, but I feel like if we're going to pay this kind of $25 million, why not go for someone like Noah Syndergaard, who's a little bit younger, He's been struggling a little bit, so that is that is something to keep an eye on out for. McCullers is a is an option that's there. Already a trade we're making before season four is Marcus Semyon for Robbie Erlin, a long reliever. Um, Daniel Norris just needs a little bit of help. He's been struggling in that long relief role. Alrighty, so you probably can already see some of the moves we made during free agency. Um, Carlos Correa being the biggest one at 27 years old, 96 overall. We signed him to basically a max deal, 30 million a year. Um, he's been hitting the ball very well since the start of this rebuild. So I saw him available. That's why we traded Marcus Semyon. Um, and then another player we brought in was Kyle Schwarber. He's going to be our DH. Um, he wanted it's it's a big contract. So it's kind of boom or bust if he doesn't do well We're gonna have to trade him um, Lance McCullers Garrett Cole just I felt like if we could get Correa For 30 million, we don't need to pay Garrett Cole 25 million. We can pay Lance McCullers 14 million um, And he looks just as good based on his his rating his stats last year was very solid So hopefully he can continue that going forward and then obviously Robbie Erlin is one of the players that we traded Mark. Oh, the, tr the player that we got uh, when we traded Marcus Semyon. Um, he's the long reliever. He's going to help out Daniel Norris. So this is the team. I tried to bring up uh, Jesus Lazardo, but when I brought him up, he drops from an 80 to a 74. So we're going to let Frankie Montas pitch this season. And I hope Lazardo is ready next year. I really want to get him involved in this rebuild. Um, but look at the team. It looks, it looks nice. Uh, not much has changed here. I'm gonna give Kayla a shot right there, um, but I like I like the way the team is looking so far. This is the team um, as you know as it stands. I don't want Loriano that high in the lineup. I want it like that. We'll let Robertson uh, lead off, not Brian Anderson Robertson, but you know the team's looking good. When you got an 88 leadoff hitter, then you got Correa, Chapman, Olsen, Brian Anderson, Kyle Schwarber, 
uh loriano is definitely on a like this is his make or break season i need him to hit better than what 250 he hasn't cracked it yet uh same with austin meadows i need him you know he's 26 he needs to do better than 255 you know we need to see this number 274 um and then we'll see how that goes sean murphy got the call up to the bigs i'm actually gonna start him over narvaez just to kind of see how things go um if it doesn't work out we can always put Navar narvaez back in the starting lineup Alrighty, season four we're gonna go for a player that i remember from the first year draft and that's Derek littleton he looks unreal uh good fielding good speed um his hitting stats are still developing he's only 21 years old uh switch hitter um his contract is still pretty low so i'm gonna see if i can sign him to an extension um and that way we don't have to pay him too much uh big money and we can avoid losing him in free agency but an 87 overall at 21 years old he just looks just too good to pass up loriano is having one of his best years to date he's hitting 274 with 10 homers and 43 rbis but uh this guy it's a prospect from season one i want to see how he does um get him involved so loriano puck and jorge mateo are going to be traded it it's just to get a it's just to get a season one prospect involved in this rebuild season four finishes at 114 and 48 we won the division this time and we're taking on the winner of the wild card let's see some of these league leaders that we had carlos correa and matt olsen mostly correa though you can see he had a phenomenal season and then shamanea had a good season as well pitching so let's look at correa because he had the best average 342 we had the top two actually in batting averages let's see home runs was correa as well with 47 we had schwarber and olsen with 45 and 44 and then olsen had the most rbis and correa was right behind him so close very close so awards uh silver slugger correa mvp correa uh correa for hank aaron award and a couple gold gloves but yeah carlos correa was definitely the right pickup for us so lance mccullers says he's going down which is a little bit unfortunate but you know the stats the stats weren't as good as the season before uh whoops a four era but um hopefully hopefully it can get a little bit better you can see Sean here had a sub three ERA for the third straight season. Awesome to see. He only lost two games throughout the entirety of the year. Um, Daniel Mangden, again, he's getting better and better, it's, which is awesome to see. You know, he's at a three ERA, 18 and six. Great to see. Blackburn, 330 ERA. So he's, you know, he's still hovering around that, you know, sub 3.5 ERA, which is good to see. Um, 122 strikeouts perfect frankie montas was you know the highest era but that's all right i'm not gonna stress over it daniel norris there we go three five seven era that's good to see brought it back down from the 4.25 um, 133 innings pitched so i mean there we go he's starting to finally pass that 80 mark which is what we wanted when we first traded for him robbie erlin killed it sub sub two point like a 2.45 era killed it trevino a little high era but somehow he's still going up hendrix is a free agent this year we'll have to see what how much he wants 3.5 era is not bad matt bowman is a player i wanted to trade but you can see he's not getting many innings so i mean we probably could bring in someone that's a little uh, a little cheaper even though 2.1 million is not that expensive uh floro is a free agent as well 3.86 era eh keone kella 3.57 a lot better than what he did last year with a 5.91 and blake trying lights out still so i mean he's still doing amazing um it says he's going down in overall but i definitely see he's gonna have a like another good year i don't see why he wouldn't so looking at our team daniel robertson's a 90 he hit 331 26 home runs 99 rbis 186 hits unreal Carlos Correa is only getting better, which is scary to think about because he had almost 200 hits, 47 home runs, 128 RBIs, and a 342 average. That is gross. Matt Chapman, 266. So, he, I mean, he's still kind of consistently doing the same stuff. Matt Olsen hit 300. He's scary. He's He puts up scary numbers. It's just gross. 
Brian Anderson almost hit 300. Um, his home runs and RBIs went down a little bit, but you know the average and the hits are still there. Kyle Schwarber did pretty good as a DH. I mean, 45 home runs, 107 RBIs, not bad. Derek Littleton, you know, still around the same mark, 265 average. Definitely want to see that go up a little bit. Austin Meadows, there we go. He's 85 overall. He hit 322. He hit 150. 54 hits there we go 19 home runs 86 rbis that is what we traded for sean murphy somehow an 88 but he hit 195 i don't understand it i'm not going to complain that's a good that's a good rated catcher so i'm hoping next year lazardo is good enough to be in the majors heck even morris petrovitz might take over because lazardo just for some reason can't put it together and be MLB ready. So let's see how this playoff series goes against the the Red Sox. All right, game one, game two, game three, game four. We won it. Okay, so let's get our starters all aligned. Um, should be like that. Man, our three, three and four starter did not do well. So. Game one, we lost. Game two, we won. Three. So, 2-2. Two, two. Oh, elimination game. We will quick manage this one. Um, Let's see how it goes. We're going to go with... We're going to go with Manea because he's, he's had a little less on the... Correa, 206, really? Um, but his ERA is a little bit lower. Not a good start. I mean, one run allowed. Okay. We're going against Shane Bieber here. Let's not let the bats go quiet now. Come on, guys. All right. A double for us. A walk. Fielder's choice. Sack fly. Come on, Correa. There we go. Tying run equals it up. We're not able to take advantage of that. We get out of that first and second with no outs situation. All right. So we got to put, we got to get some hits on this guy. You know, we got to get his energy down. That was probably Sean's last inning. A double. And nothing happens there. So we're going to take him out. We're going to go to Floro. And all right. We get out of that perfect bottom eight. This is the perfect time to strike against this Indians team. Correa has been doing horribly in this situation. Like the playoffs in general. Sack fly and you don't, you don't bring the run in. Bases loaded. Schwarber. One run scores. Perfect. Derek Littleton flies out, but that's okay. We had the lead going into the ninth. Trinan's going to come in and not blow it. Are you serious? Can we walk it off here, please? Thank you. Matt Olson has to win us the game. Which means we're going to quickly quick manage this one now. And this time we're going to let McCullers go. So again, same lineup. Looking at the Indians lineup, Inciarte's there. Gary Sanchez, Ozuna, Dozier. So some new faces for sure. A double and a run scores. Okay, so they struck early. Which means we probably should get a run back. And not let them do that. Are you serious? Alright, we get one back. Perfect. Can we get another one back? One more run. Come on, guys. They're, oh, wow. It is a five-run game. We're going to let the CPU handle it. That that got that got ugly very quickly. 13-5, to five, and the pitching really let us down. I also think uh, Correa played horribly. I want to check his, his stats for the playoffs. 214. Yeah, that's not... That's not good. Schwarber hit 136, 196 for our leadoff hitter. Our pitchers got absolutely rocked. Mangden is high. Blackburn, okay. But McCullers, 10.95. That's that's not acceptable. I'll see you guys in the offseason once we go through all the contracts. And then we'll get season five started. Contracts wise, everybody should get one here. Most of them are all minor league contracts. Arbitration, the only one I'm not offering arbitration is Bowman. He just hasn't cut. Like he just, it just doesn't cut, just doesn't cut it. And what he's done is just, it's not good enough. Obviously his innings aren't that great. Like he hasn't pitched a lot, but in his appearances, it just hasn't been good enough. So season five, really the only change is Bowman is out. Taylor Rogers is in. 
um and then jesus lizardo is going to be one of our starters as well he's finally like holding his 80 rating so i'm really excited to see how he does it was really close i thought about bringing up morris petrovitz you can see he's a 79 overall um reggie perry's not too far behind him rob chen's right there as well um, so a lot of our pitching prospects have definitely grown. Mitch Groves up to a 76. Jerome Lewis is a 71. Um, we have that first baseman. Phipps is a 67. And then really the only other one was a center fielder. Um, Barrera. No, it was Elvis Herrera. But he's uh, his potential has gone down a little bit. So he's a little bit uh, disappointing, um, I would say. But when you look at the team, the team looks really strong. Um, as the starting lineup, the bench, not so much, but... It's it's a scary looking team. Alrighty, so at the deadline, we're gonna go Lance McCullers, Dylan Floro, and Peter Sams for Edwin Diaz and Alex Reyes of the Cubs. Um, Alex, uh, McCullers just was the worst performing of our starters at this point, and um, I feel like we're gonna give Petrovitz a chance in the bigs, get one of our prospects involved. Lazardo's pitching lights. Lights out. The wins and losses aren't there, but a 3.1 ERA is solid. And then everybody else has been doing pretty decent as well. So you guys can see the team here. Adding these arms is uh, is, a, is a little much. Uh, we're probably going to send Daniel Morris down since uh, he never really panned out like I would have hoped. So season five finishes with our final record of 102 and 60. We won the division and taking on the winner of the wild card league leaders matt olsen had a very solid season um, home runs ribbies and slugging percentage and then the win league or the mlb league leaders for winning percentage was uh paul blackburn let's see awards mvp for matt olsen like he's he is a must pick up if you need a first baseman so let's take a look at the team we'll start with the bench you guys can see the additions that are like the players there daniel robertson not a bad pickup for like a second baseman. Very consistent with his hits. You know, mid-20s home runs. Solid player. Carlos Correa is looking like a must pickup at shortstop as well. You know, 300 or abouts every year. Close to 40 home runs. 100 plus RBIs. Just an absolute amazing player. Matt Chapman. Obviously, his bat isn't as good as his fielding. He's around a 260 hitter. But, you know, mid-20s ho uh, home runs, not bad. Matt Olson though, is a monster. 40, you know, plus home runs every year. 120 plus RBIs. Near 300 average. 170 plus hits. He's just, he's just too good. Um, Brian Anderson, 88 overall. I mean, he's not bad either. You know, he's been hitting, you know, 160 plus hits. Around 20 home runs. Around 70 to 80 RBIs. Not bad, not bad. Um, Kyle Schwarber, he's starting to find that DH role. This th He cooled off a little bit this season, but uh, he definitely suits that DH role. Derek Littleton hit 281 this year, um, 23 home runs, 91 RBIs, 180 hits. Austin Meadows, he's looking like he's finally finding his stride, but he's looking like, a, you know, just under 20 home runs. Not bad, you know, 60-ish RBIs, 280 average, 270 average. That's solid. That's that's pretty respectable. And then Sean Murphy had his best offensive season as well. So the team's looking good. We will face contract issues though. Chapman's finally passed his arbitration. Olsen's passed his arbitration. I want to say Brian Anderson. Yeah, Brian Anderson hits free agency. So um, definitely some contract structuring that would have to go on. Um, you guys can see Manea there. Lazardo in his first season eight and or 11 and eight on the year 365 era blackburn blackburn's looking like a really good pitcher as well you know he's been around the three eras he doesn't strike out a lot of people but he looks really good mangden too you know he's a little bit of a late bloomer has been really pitching well last couple seasons petrovitz let's take a look six and two on the year you know he's only 24 3.2 era that's solid for half a season that's really good very promising um and it you know, if we have some of these pitching prospects, you know, come up to the bigs like we have. We have Perry. We have Anderson, Chen, Montas. You know, that saves us some budget space that we could allow to give contracts to Chapman, give contracts to Anderson, give contracts to Matt Olson. Because you guys can see 
some of these contracts do come up um but I, I guess we would have some money to play with um but it, it could get a little dicey about affording everything alex reyes didn't do too well in this spot erlin did though like erlin's a good long reliever trevino's kind of struggling and that's always been a trend with me and trevino trevino does well for a couple seasons and then he absolutely turns into garbage hendrix is starting to fall apart taylor rogers didn't do as well as i would have hoped kayla okay 3.5 that's okay one of our better bullpen arms edwin diaz with a two era in the setup role and blake trinan is looking like he's finally starting to decrease in rating and uh, ability pretty quickly so good thing he hits free agency this year and good thing edwin diaz has a contract for the next couple years because now we have our closer so that worked out pretty well so Outside of the pitching prospects, we really didn't have anybody that grew too much. So let's just see how these playoffs go in season five. We're taking on the Rays and we advance against the Yankees. I want to get the pitching rotation set up. So let's go here, here. Blackburn got roughed. Um, you know what? We'll give we'll give Petrovic a, a, a shot. See how he does. So we won the first, won the second, identical scores. Petrovic wins, and we sweep the Yankees going into the World Series against the Dodgers. Um, let's get, let's again, get our starting rotation lined up. So it said Mangden was starting. So, boom. Boom. And then Petrovic did well, so I'm going to leave him there. We'll go like that. So let's see how this Hey, like this plays out. Uh, so we lost the first, we won the second, won the third, won the fourth, and since this is the elimination game, let's just let's just quick manage it. And in season five on the road, can we get this win? Sean Manea is gonna Manaya, Manea, however you say it, doesn't matter. That's how we start a game. We're going against Dustin May. Um, and Daniel Robertson starts us off with the homer. Looking at the Dodgers lineup. Tolls, Travis Shaw, Seager, Bellinger, Muncy, um, Teoscar Hernandez, Schrock, Adalas Garcia, or no, Aramis Garcia, and the pitcher May. So we have a one nothing lead. First and second, no outs. All right, can the pitcher hit a sack fly? He doesn't. He hits into a double play, and they take the lead on a two run bomb. And no run score so no further run score so we're still down one and now we're down five six uh um let's have reyes come in get us out of that all right so we start with the walk can we get a little bit of a okay one out a little bit of a rally ourselves double play so that's all right we're we're letting the cpu handle this and we lost 14 to 2 so it is now a three to two series we're gonna hop into this one and hope we don't completely botch it we're at home this time we gotta win lazardo lazardo's taking the mound the rookie is there gonna be any nerves first inning so far so good a single for correa and nothing happens for us all right so come on let's let's get the bats going let's help out lazardo and uh, so far, that's not going to happen. We're taking on Walker Bueller, so it's definitely going to be a challenge um, for us. You know, he's one of the better pitchers in the league. Matt Olson, though, gives us the lead. First and second for Littleton. Nothing happens. So, Lizardo's doing well. Knock on wood. Hopefully, nothing happens. Um, we, need, we need insurance runs, though. We definitely need insurance runs. As I say that, that happens. Double play, really? All right, that, that was Luzardo's last inning for sure. I just looked at his energy, and he is dead. So we're going to take out Luzardo in the eighth. It is a tie game. We're going to go to a lefty. We're going to go Hendricks. Double play. That was just what we needed. So Murphy leads it off against Wen Wen Wendelkin. Strikeout, a ground out, and a ground out. Hendricks, one, two, three, perfect. Chapman, Olsen. Anderson, walk it off for us. Double. Schwarber. Alrighty, that was that was his last inning. Can we walk it off here in the 10th?
to win a World Series? No. Hit by pitch. This is this is not good. What do we got? A righty up. Let's go to Diaz. Gets us out of that jam. Whoo! Come on, guys. Let's end it here. Or not. That's cool too. I didn't want to walk it off there. Twelfth inning. It's getting out of hand, boys. Come on. Really? We're gonna go to game seven. We're going to game seven. Oh man, am I really gonna blow this? It's gonna come down to who, who are we gonna put? Petrovitz or Mangden? We're gonna go Petrovitz. We gotta go with him, right? We gotta go with the prospect. We gotta get some early runs. We're going against Julio Urias. Like, why are the bats gone so cold all of a sudden? You know, like we're we're a good offensive team and all of a sudden our bats have gone just completely quiet so it's a two i i think we lost it i i honestly think we've blown this <laughs> really first and second no, one out a single bases are loaded sack fly brings in one so we're, we're down one there we go. Matt Olson brings us e even with it. All right. There we go. That was his last inning. That was his last inning. No, no, no questions asked. So, um, we'll go Trevino and he does one, two, three. Perfect. David Robertson's kind of tired. Can we take advantage of it? A single. Okay. Matt Olson, please. Come on. All righty. Come on. Bottom nine. This is our chance. A walk. Do we have anybody who can pinch run with some speed? <laughs> Doesn't look. I guess McFl McClure. Double play. Really? All right. Littleton. Murphy. Walks. Robertson. Walks. Correa, please. Yes. The Athletics won the World Series. It got a little dicey at the end. I didn't like that. Let's go see how the awards panned out. Playoff MVP for Correa. And obviously the World Series MVP. 414 average in the World Series with three home runs and eight RBIs. Uh, the entirety of the postseason, he had five home runs, 12 RBIs, and a 385 average. So he did most of his damage in the World Series. So I'm these two pitchers, Petrovic... And Lazardo lights out in the postseason. Gets me really excited for this pitching staff. Um, you know, Blackburn looks good. Mangden looks decent. He struggled a little bit in the playoffs. But, you know, the, the entirety right here, these five right here look really good. We got a couple guys behind them that look really good as well. The bullpen definitely needs some work. They've really started to fall, fall apart. Uh, at certain points like Rogers Hendricks Trevino just look dicey they don't look too too promising when you look at the lineup is if you can bring most of these guys back you're looking at a very strong team Robertson's 29 Correa's 28 Chapman's 29 Olsen's 29 yeah so even Anderson I know is 29 Schwarber's gonna be the same yeah so you're, you're looking at a, a pretty decent team that still has four five six years left in them before they start to decrease in rating you're looking at a very scary oakland athletics team some good prospects behind them mostly in the pitching so you would have to find some like prospects for like fielders and stuff like that but that shouldn't be too hard so i hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild if you did hit the like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content and i'll catch you all in the next rebuild oh leave a comment who you guys want to see next i'll catch you all the next one peace